What is up? My name is Noah Hills. You can find me on Twitter at Noah More Parties. And this is another Thursday Night Football prize picks 5x5 five five flex play video. We're trying to 10x our money again. Last week we went 4-1. and one. I think before that we went 5-0. and oh. I don't know. But uh, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> The first line I like, we're taking all overs today. This should be maybe a little bit of a messy game, but I found five, actually seven overs that I like. And the first one is Marcus Mariota's rushing yards line of 29.5. I like the over. He's averaging 33.8 rushing yards per game this season and has hit this line in five out of nine games. He only had 24 rushing yards last week, but... Prior to that, he had hit this line in four straight games, including 43 rushing yards against this same Carolina Panthers defense just two weeks ago. Mariota is a good runner. He runs a lot. He's been hitting this line. I like him to hit it again. The next line I like is Olamide Zacchaeus's 22.5 receiving yards line. I like the over as well. He's averaging 36.8 receiving yards per game so far this season, which is only 4.2 fewer yards per game than Drake London, and it's actually 1.2 more receiving yards per game than Cal Pitts. Pitts and London's receiving yards line in this game is 38.5. Both of them have the same line, 38.5, where Zacchaeus, despite being essentially as productive as both of them, his line is just 22.5 yards. He had only 19 and 10 yards in his last two games, but his snap share, his route per participation rate has not gone down. He just kind of happened to not be productive in the last two games. But before that, he had five straight games of at least 31 yards and has hit this line in six out of nine games total. He's been low-key kind of productive, like in the context of other receivers in this offense. So far this season, this line is not very high at all. I like Zacchaeus to go over 22.5 receiving yards on Thursday Night Football. The next line I like is Cordero Patterson's combined rushing and receiving yards line of 62.5. I like the over. He's averaging 84.2 scrimmage yards per game this season. He had only 53 last week, but that was while playing just 39% of the snaps in his first game back from injury. Prior to getting hurt, he was averaging between, or he was playing between 59 and 65% of the snaps in each game. So right around 60%, you know, snap rate. Tyler Algier with Cordero Patterson Hurt stepped into that role, was also playing right around 60% of the snaps each game, but Algier's snap percentage went down to 38% with Patterson back in the lineup last week. So I would imagine, like, what reason is there for Patterson to play less this week than he did last week? He was playing a lot earlier in the season as he, you know, continues to acclimate post-injury. I would imagine he'll be playing more. And the Panthers' defense allows the 5th most rushing yards to running backs and the 11th most receiving yards to running backs in the entire league. Patterson's a good player. He's been a productive player. His role should continue to grow, and I like him to go over, get at least 63 yards from scrimmage this week. The fourth line I like is DJ Moore's receiving yards line of 57.5. I like the over. In spite of him only averaging 49.9 receiving yards so far this season, he hasn't been very good this year, or at least very productive in this really bad offense. We know that. He's been disappointing in fantasy. He's gone over this line in just three of his nine games, but the Falcons, they're the single worst defense in the league against like passing yards. They allow the most passing yards in the entire league. They allow the second most receiving yards to the wide receiver position in the entire league. Wide receiver ones have hit this line in all but two games against the Falcons this season. And one of those was Michael Thomas missing it by only going for 57 yards in week one. So since week one, only one receiver has not hit this line. One wide receiver one has not gone over this line for DJ Moore. And DJ Moore put up 152 on them just two weeks ago. I would imagine he can probably get 58 yards. The last line I like as part of this 5x5 five five flex play is Terrace Marshall's 36.5 receiving yards line. I like the over, essentially for the same reasons that I like the DJ Moore line. The Falcons have been really bad against receivers. Terrace Marshall is averaging 33.5 receiving yards per game this season and has hit this over in just two out of the six games that he's played, but he really didn't start playing most of the snaps until like three weeks ago. And since then, he's been above 85% of the snaps in each game. And the two games when he did hit this line are the last two two weeks when he had 87 yards, 53 yards. One of those games was against the Falcons and wide receiver twos are averaging 77.7 yards per game against the Falcons. Every single one of them, every single wide receiver two they've faced has had more receiving yards than Terrace Marshall's line is currently at. No wide receiver twos have actually come within 15 yards of missing this line. Like the, the worst performance from a wide receiver two against the Falcons this season has been like 53 yards. Terrace Marshall has been playing a lot lately. He's been relatively productive lately and he's going against a team that is the worst in the league against passing, he should be okay. 
Uh, so that's the five by five. Marcus Mariota rushing yards, Olamide Zacchaeus receiving yards, Cordero Patterson rushing and receiving yards, and then DJ Moore and Terrace Marshall receiving yards. I have two honorable mentions also taking the overs on these. Tyler Algier's line of 32.5 rushing yards. I like the over. He's averaging 52.9 this season and has hit this line in each of his last six games. I know that Cordero Patterson is back and that Algier will probably be taking a, a little bit more of a backseat in the offense because of that. But A, this line is not very high. And B, he's been playing well with Patterson out of the lineup. And I would imagine he'll still be involved in the offense with Patterson back in the lineup. Last week, he played only 38% of the snaps after playing, you know, between 55 and 60 while Patterson was gone. Last week, just 38% of the snaps, but he still ran the ball 10 times and had over 90 rushing yards. The Panthers, again, are giving up the fifth most rushing yards to running backs. I think there's wiggle room here for Cordero Patterson to have 63 total yards and for Tyler Algier to rush for at least 33. Like that shouldn't be difficult in the same game. The last line I like here is PJ Walker's first half passing yards line of 82.5. I like the over. He got benched last week and obviously didn't hit this line last week. But other than that, in the three games in which he started the season, he's averaging 185 passing yards per game. They're starting him again this week. They went to Baker Mayfield last week. They clearly don't want to play Baker Mayfield. Otherwise, why wouldn't you start him after benching the other guy last week? But Sam Darnold is now active. And so there's some risk you know, that they could go to Darnold this week if PJ Walker struggles again. But that's why I like the first half line and not the full game line here for Walker. And he already passed for 317 yards against the Falcons two weeks ago. And again, the Falcons give up the most passing yards in the league. PJ Walker could fuck around and throw an interception, not play very well, and still have 83 passing yards in the first half. Like, this is not a very high line. I like him to uh, to be a little bit productive, throw for that many in the first half. But yeah, there we go. That's uh, the 5x5 five five with two honorable mentions. Uh, hopefully we 10x our money again this week. Catch you next time. Peace.